the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students i know you all are doing good in your house and uh, belated onam wishes for everyone i could call few children but uh, some of them i couldn't reach maybe your net connection was off so uh, i had a great experience with you all watching you uh, putting pookalam and uh, it was i felt very happy children because uh, though we are not meeting each other now at least on that auspicious occasion i could see you all with your family and i know every one of you would have had a great time with your family members and uh, continue this be happy make others happy try to spend with your parents and grandparents the maximum because now if you are going to be in school these are the sweet memories that you can give to your parents and grandparents by spending with them right and uh, it's been one week you are all watching the videos and the virtual platform i think you are all having a great time watching the videos uh, putting yourself in a schedule and i hope nobody is missing the videos don't miss it try to be uh, on par with the timetable and uh, if you have any doubts regarding the subjects don't hesitate children you can put a message at least if you are calling when you are not reachable to the teacher you can just put an audio message so that the teachers can give their feedback or can reply back a little later because they might be having or they might be engaged in any other work right so this virtual platform will be successful only with your support so uh, give your support watch the classes regularly give timely feedback or if any suggestions are there they are most welcome and uh, all the best children okay so now let us get back into today's topic before getting into today's topic i just want to recollect what we have learned in the previous class right so let us start with um, i will call some other names today sandwana yes today now she is going to tell us like what are the topics that we learned yes sandwana can you tell me yes we learned about matter we learned about homogeneous heterogeneous mixture pure substances elements and compounds okay yes sanjay can you tell me what did we learn about density yes we learned that density is equal to mass by volume okay and we have anjana madhu we have some new children i forgot to tell their names we have atmaj and uh, we have deena and arshna we have anjana madhu we have maha shweta so these are our new children for this academic year so let me ask anjana madhu tell me dear what all we what are the things that we learned in the last class yes we learned about significant figures scientific notations and all those stuffs right okay so i hope you are able to recollect what we learned in the last class and uh, sanjay was asking me few problems which i'll be sending you through the whatsapp some of the significant figures like homeworks which you can practice in your house and uh, now let's get back into today's class today we are going to learn about few laws whenever i say law you should obey it right so these are the laws made by the scientist for continuing with the chemistry of elements and compounds right so we are going to see with law of chemical compounds 
The first one is law of conservation of mass. Conservation, the word conservation means something that you are going to preserve, something that is not going to get destroyed, that is called as conserve, protect, right. So, law of conservation of mass states that matter can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction. What does it mean? There is a chemical reaction that is happening. What is a chemical reaction? We always have been learned that there are some reactants which are reacting to give the products. So, such a reaction we call it as a chemical reaction. Now, during this chemical reaction, the reactants which are reacting, when they get converted into the products, the matter is neither created nor destroyed. Whatever the reactants that are reacting, that are the products that we are getting. We will see an example, sulphur plus iron, when they combine together, you get FES, that is iron sulphide. 32 plus 56 is 88 grams of the reactants when they are reacting, you get again 88 grams of products, right, along with some of the heat energy which is evolved. So, the matter is what? The amount, the content is neither created, it is nor getting destroyed. So, that is what is called as law of conservation of mass. So, I will repeat, matter can neither be created nor be destroyed during a chemical reaction. During a chemical reaction, atoms are neither created nor destroyed. The number of atoms remain constant. What do you mean by constant? Same. They do not change at all. They remain unchanged. Throughout the reaction, since the number of atoms does not change, the mass must remain constant as well. If two atoms are reacting and I get four atoms in my products, definitely there will be a change in the mass, there will be an increase in the mass. Or if the number of atoms is less in my products, there will be a decrease in the mass. But law of conservation of mass says, atoms are neither created nor destroyed. So, if four atoms are participating during the chemical reaction as reactants and I get four atoms in my products, the mass of four atoms will remain the same they do not change. That is called as law of conservation of mass. Next is law of definite proportion. When I say definite, it means perfect, the same. What does it mean? The elements of a compound are always present in the same proportion by mass. I repeat children, the elements of a compound. I have a compound, in that compound there are some elements present. They are always present in the same proportion by mass. What does it mean? Four parts of hydrogen combined with two parts of oxygen give two gaseous water. I repeat, four parts of hydrogen combines with two parts of oxygen to give two gaseous water in the ratio of two is to one. Four is to two is nothing but two is to one. So, their proportion will be the same. So, if, I, if this is going to become double, this will also become double. That is what they are saying. The elements of a compound are always present in the same proportion. What proportion? 2 is to 1. If I am taking 2 parts of hydrogen, I should take 1 part of oxygen. If I am going to make it 4 part, this will become 2 part. If this is 8 parts, this will become 4 parts. Always the ratio will be 2 is to 1. That we call it as law of definite proportion. Joseph Prost, what did he say? In a chemical compound, the elements are always pre present in the definite proportion by mass or by weight. That will be also given in the textbook. What does it mean? Water always contain two elements, that is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. When I say H2O, hydrogen we have two atoms and oxygen I have one atom. So, two is to one. When I say hydrogen is to oxygen, it will be always in the ratio 2 is to 1. So, one atom of oxygen, they combine together in the same ratio of 2 is to 16. What is that 16? 2 grams is the mass of 2 hydrogen atom. 1 hydrogen atom, it is 1 gram. So, 2 hydrogen atom becomes 2 grams. And for oxygen, 1 oxygen atom, it is 16, which is nothing but 1 is to 8. So, if 9 grams of water is decomposed, 
9 grams of water is getting decomposed, we get 1 gram of hydrogen and 8 gram of oxygen. You are able to follow children. When I say same proportion by mass, I have water, 2 hydrogen atoms, it is 2 grams. When I say oxygen, 1 oxygen atom, it is 16 grams. So, when I am going to compare the ratio of their weight, that is their mass, it becomes 2 is to 16, which is 1 is to 8. So, if I am going to dissociate my water, decompose my water, I get 1 is to 8, where 1 gram belongs to my hydrogen and 8 grams belongs to my oxygen. Next comes law of multiple proportion. When the name multiple only says more, not with a single, there are so many. What does he say? If two elements, if there are two elements which can combine to form two or more compound, the masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of other element are in a simple ratio. What does it mean? We will take different examples children. Like Carbon and oxygen are the two elements. Now, this carbon and oxygen can combine to form carbon monoxide, can also form carbon dioxide. Or if I want hydrogen oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen can combine to form water and also hydrogen peroxide. When I take nitrogen and oxygen, they can form nitric oxide, they can form nitrogen dioxide, they also can form nit nitrous oxide. Right, what they are saying is that two elements can combine to form more than one compound, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. The masses of one element which is combining with the fixed mass of other element which means carbon, carbon. Both the case you have only one carbon taking part to form a compound. In carbon monoxide, one carbon combines with one oxygen. In carbon dioxide, one carbon combines with two oxygen atom. So, in both the compounds, carbon is only one. So, the mass of carbon is fixed, which is 12.01. What is different? What is varying? It is the mass of oxygen. So, oxygen is only one oxygen atom that is 16 grams here, but here it is two oxygen atom which becomes 32. So, what happens here? When this is 16 and this becomes 32, so this will be 2 is to 1, here it will be 1 is to 1. Understood? 2 is to 1 is nothing but 2 grams of 2 oxygen atom with 1 carbon atom, here it is only 1 is to 1 ratio. Okay, ratio of oxygen in CO2 to O in CO, 2 is to 1. In carbon dioxide, 2 oxygen atom, in carbon monoxide, 1 oxygen atom, so ratio of oxygen becomes 2 is to 1. That is what is given in the definition. Two elements combine to form more than one compound. Masses of one element, masses of one element which combine with the fixed mass of other element which is carbon bears a whole number ratio. Next one is Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. What is this law? See children, uh, when you are studying about laws, laws and all, don't get panic. I know you will find it little bit confusing because you are studying for the first time. Same experience you had when you are studying your alphabets, 26 English alphabets. It was not easy, right? Finding A, B, C all looking alike. Similarly, our laws will be little bit confusing but do not get panic. Take time, write the laws like a law. Scientists have taken so much effort to make a law. You don't change with your words, okay? Laws should be written as laws. Gay-Lussac's law of combining volume says, when measured at same temperature and pressure, the ratio of the volumes of reacting gases are small whole numbers. What does it mean? Two volumes of hydrogen combined with one volume of oxygen to give two volumes of water molecules. Again the ratio becomes 2 is to 1 is to 2. The ratio is only a whole number, simple whole number ratio but the temperature and pressure are fixed. The volumes of the gases which are reacting will be in the whole numbers. Same examples are given in the textbook for you. So, you can go through that when you are studying each 
law because in exam we will be given the example and will be asked us to state the law or they may give ask you to write the law with an example so you should be thorough enough to study the law and one example at least for each law next is avogadro law avogadro law states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules what do you mean by equal same same volumes of gases at same temperature and pressure should contain same number of molecules and this he did by considering polyatomic molecules what did he do he took one volume of hydrogen plus one volume of hydrogen again plus one volume of oxygen all are one 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 volume of hydrogen hydrogen and oxygen he got what did he get he got two volumes of water vapor so two volumes of hydrogen when react with one volume of oxygen it gives two volumes of water vapor so the same volume whatever is combining here that was the products that he got it here that was mentioned by avogadro law so what are the laws we studied law of conservation of mass law of definite proportion law of multiple proportion gay lussac's law avogadro law avogadro law we studied in 10th standard you remember children volume is directly proportional to number of molecules you remember at constant temperature and pressure so same thing only which we are studying in a different way so these five laws are very important in exam point of view uh, refer to the examples that are given in the textbook to you apart from this i have already told you hss.live.in where you can select chemistry notes there are lot of examples like proper definitions will be given to you if you are finding it difficult you can take a print out and at least write the important things in your notebook okay now we'll get into the most important theory which is dalton's atomic theory before getting into atomic theory what do we know about atoms we know atoms are indivisible right they are very small tiny substances right what that is what we have learned atom is the smallest part he postulated four important points in his theory and all those four points are very important and it comes for two marks in your board exam okay so this is very important dalton's atomic theory has got four points let us get into the first point matter consists of individual atom what is a matter when i say matter is solid liquid gas anything that i take if i take this this is a matter this is made up of some elements some atoms when i'm drinking the water it's a liquid that is made up of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen the air i breathe or the carbon dioxide i give out is made up of atoms made up of carbon atom oxygen atom right so there are atoms involved in every single matter that we see around us so matter consists of individual atoms the second point says all the atoms of a given element have identical properties including identical mass when i take a given element any element say hydrogen element all the hydrogen atom will have the same property they'll have the same mass when i say water whichever water i drink will have hydrogen and oxygen so all the hydrogen should have same atomic mass all the oxygen should have the same property they will not differ so that is what is all the atoms of a given element have identical properties including identical mass so in a given element the atoms all will have the same property what is the third one compounds are formed when atoms of different element combined in a fixed ratio what do you mean by a compound when i say carbon dioxide it is formed by the combination of different elements what are the elements involved in combination of carbon dioxide carbon oxygen one carbon atom combined with two oxygen atom so you get carbon dioxide right simple in a fixed ratio one is to two one carbon atom needs two oxygen atom to form carbon dioxide when i say water two hydrogen atom combines with one oxygen atom right that is water 
when I say hydrogen peroxide, two hydrogen atom combines with two oxygen atom to form H2O2. That is what we say compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms. What do you mean by that reorganization? Reorganization means they adjust themselves in a different way. These are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical combination. Any chemical reaction I take, for example, say zinc plus copper sulfate gives zinc sulfate plus copper. There is a rearrangement, there is a reorganization, but the matter is neither created nor destroyed, which is our first law, that is law of conservation of mass. So what did he say? Any chemical reaction is taking place that involves reorganization of atoms. Atoms get reorganized, it gets rearranged. But what happens finally, whatever atoms are participating during the chemical reaction, those reactants, that atoms will be present in my product site. There is no change in that. That's why we say these are neither created nor destroyed during the chemical combination. So these are the laws that we studied today for our first chapter, right? There are four, five laws we study in Dalton's atomic theory, the most important. Now we will be studying about atomic mass and molecular mass, also about formula mass if it is possible or else we will get back into the next class. So now we will get into the board to study about atomic mass and molecular mass. So children, now we will see about atomic mass and molecular mass. So when I say mass of an atom, it is we know it is very small and uh, atoms we do not see it by our naked eyes, only through microscope level we can see it. So mass of an atom being very small, it can be identified using mass spectroscopy. There is a spectrometer which can be done, which can be used to see the mass of an atom. One atomic mass unit is defined as mass exactly equal to one twelfth of the mass of the carbon atom. That is 1 AMU is equal to 1.6605 into 10 power minus 24 grams. This is a very important definition. Any atomic mass of an element is calculated using the mass which is equal to one twelfth of the mass of the carbon atom. See if you remember. Um, 10th standard we have studied about Avogadro number and how did we calculate the relative atomic mass that is using carbon that is carbon we divide into we take a measuring balance we divide the carbon into 12 parts when we say 1 12 12 parts and then we start putting the other elements here like sodium magnesium carbon and whichever is equal to the weight of this carbon with respect to that, we used to calculate the atomic mass of the element. So one atomic mass, you do not have to worry about the experiments now. Definition is important. One atomic mass unit is defined as mass exactly equal to one twelfth of the mass of one carbon atom which is one AMU. So atomic mass unit will be written as AMU. What is molecular mass? When I say atom, it is an atom. Number of protons plus neutrons will be giving me the atomic mass, right? And number of protons or number of electrons is equal to the atomic number. What is molecular mass? It is the sum of the atomic masses of the elements that are present in a molecule. When I say there is a molecule, the sum of all the atomic mass of the elements, if there are three elements present, the atomic mass of all the three elements will be equal to the molecular mass. So how do we do that but when I take methane it is CH4, one carbon atom and there are four hydrogen atoms. So how do I calculate? It is for one carbon atom it is 12.011 U that is unit plus 4 because 4 hydrogen atoms are there. So 4 into 1.008, 1.008 1 is the atomic mass of hydrogen. Since there are 4 hydrogens, I put 4 into 1.008. So 
so when i add i get 16.043 unit so for methane you used to write after putting all round off now we are using 16 grams but what is the original mass it is 16.043 unit unified mass so u we'll write nowadays we are writing as g that is grams when i take water as an example we have two hydrogen atoms which is combining with one oxygen atom to give water molecule so it will be 2 into 1.008 plus 16 will be the atomic mass of oxygen on total it is giving 18.02 so now i'll be giving you some questions through whatsapp which you can do it and write in your file calculating the molecular mass of the uh, molecule molecular mass of the total molecule right now we will learn about formula mass what is formula mass there will be a compound given to us and there is a formula what is formula how do we represent that molecule so when i say uh, methane now i wrote like this so this is a formula for methane so when i write sulfuric acid i write it as h2so4 so this is the formula for sulfuric acid so formula mass means you are going to calculate the mass of the formula but what happens in case of sodium chloride there are some compounds which do not exist as discrete molecules in their solid state instead they exist as ions like cations and anions we know sodium chloride can be represented as na plus n cl minus which will be in the form of a 3d structure assume that this is only one cube see i'm not so good in drawing so please bear with me uh, the same structure when it keeps on continuing it will become a lattice that is a uh, th three dimensional structure right where there is one sodium cation will be surrounded by six other chloride ions so this is what is called as a uh, structure a rock salt structure or i can say a three dimensional lattice structure of sodium chloride you are not going to worry about the structure now but why i am saying this is unlike other molecules sodium chloride does not exist in a free state in a solid state but it will be in the form of a three dimensional structure so how do i calculate the formula masses atomic mass of sodium plus atomic mass of chlorine so this is 23.0 atomic mass of sodium plus 35.5 atomic mass of chlorine together it makes 58.5 so this will be the formula mass of sodium chloride right so this is called as a formula mass atomic mass is mass of an atom molecular mass is sum of the uh, atomic mass of all the elements present in the compound formula mass is the mass of the formula which is nothing but the atoms present in it right now the most important concept which we'll be getting into our next class is Avogadro's number with that we are going to do some problems so everything will be on this green board where there are some problems which are involved there are four or five methods of doing the mole concept is again back after our 10th standard so i hope everybody will be eagerly uh, waiting to do some of the mathematical works uh, and hope i know you all like mathematics right whether you like it or not you have to because every problem has got a solution let us work for it so now i'll be giving you some of the homeworks in your whatsapp number kindly do it children and if you have any doubt in doing you can send me an audio message which i'll be clarifying in the next class okay so i hope you all enjoyed today's session very well and uh, let's get back into the next session with a new topic take care stay home stay safe bye i'll be uh, i'll be sending a video to you right now which has got all the laws that is law of chemical combinations together uh, which is in the form of an animation because when you are in the class I normally show you the smart class since you are not here I couldn't show it which I have already taken a video and I am going to send it right along with this so watch the video and uh, I think that will give you a more clear picture about all the five laws all the four laws actually mentioned in that and um, let us get back into the next class again with more energy for doing the problems and uh, stay home stay safe children be happy take care bye combinations
compounds are formed when elements combine together. During the formation of compounds, reactants follow some basic laws of chemical combination to form new products. Let's take a look at few of them. Antoine Lavoisier stated the law of conservation of mass. The law states that the total mass of the products always remains equal to the mass of the reactants during a physical or a chemical change. The law of conservation of mass was verified by Hans Henrik Landolt. He took equal volumes of silver nitrate and sodium chloride in an H-shaped tube. The weight of the entire apparatus along with the solutions was taken. The solutions in the tube were then mixed thoroughly. Silver ions combined with chloride ions to form silver chloride and sodium ions combined with nitrate ions to form sodium nitrate. Resulting in the formation of a white precipitate of silver chloride along with sodium nitrate. The products were weighed. It was noted that the weight of the products was equal to the weight of the reactants. A French chemist, Joseph Proust, stated the law of constant composition or definite proportion. The law states that a pure chemical compound always contains the same elements combined together exactly in the same definite proportion by weight. This law can be explained further with the help of electrolysis of water. The U-tube contains 90 grams of water. When the battery is switched on, electrolysis of water begins. The water molecules dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Oxygen is liberated at the anode and hydrogen is liberated at the cathode. The gases are collected in two different balloons. The balloons are weighed and their weights are noted down. It is observed that the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen by weight is 1 is to 8. Similarly, when 18 grams of water is electrolyzed, it is noted that the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen by weight is again 1 is to 8. This indicates that ratio of oxygen and hydrogen obtained after electrolysis of water continues to remain same irrespective of the quantity of water taken, illustrating the law of definite proportion. John Dalton stated the law of multiple proportions. According to this law, two elements that form more than one compound combine in such a way that the masses of one of the element combines with a fixed mass of the other element in the ratio of small whole numbers. Weigh an empty Pyrex tube or reduction tube. Add 1.5 grams of cupric oxide in it. Pass hydrogen into the tube. Cupric oxide gets reduced to copper and changes color. The copper obtained on cooling weighs 1.197 grams and the weight of oxygen in cupric oxide is calculated to be 0.303 grams. Thus, weight of oxygen combining with 1 gram of copper is 0.2531 gram. Similarly, when 2 grams of cuprous oxide is heated, the weight of the copper obtained is 1.776 grams and the weight of oxygen in cuprous oxide is calculated to be 0.224 gram. Thus, 
weight of oxygen combining with 1 gram of Cu is 0 0.1261 gram. When the weight of oxygen in the two oxides of copper is compared, we get a simple ratio 2 is to 1. This verifies the law of multiple proportions. Gay-Lussac stated the law of combining volumes. The law states that the ratio of the volume of the reacting gases and the products is a simple ratio under similar conditions of temperature and pressure. When one volume of hydrogen reacts with one volume of chlorine, the product obtained is two volumes of hydrogen chloride. Thus, the ratio of the volumes of hydrogen, chlorine and hydrogen chloride is 1 is to 1 is to 2, which is a simple ratio. Let's quickly summarize. Laws of chemical combinations. Law of conservation of mass. Law of constant composition or definite proportions. Law of multiple proportions. Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. Mass, volume and the mole. Imagine yourself a few hundred years back in time. How would you measure or define the mass of an atom? Chemists in those days didn't have any way to really measure the mass of an atom. So, masses were measured in relative terms. The same volume of hydrogen gas weighs much less than the same volume of oxygen gas. It was something like this. Person A is tall. But you don't know how tall because you don't have any standard unit or method to measure height. So, you simply define people's heights by comparing with another person. Person B is twice as tall as person A. Relative atomic mass work like this. Instead of person A, you have the hydrogen atom. 2 grams of hydrogen react with 16 grams of oxygen to form water. So, for every 1 gram of hydrogen, we need 8 grams of oxygen. So, the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 8. 1 gram of hydrogen, 8 grams of oxygen or 35.5 grams of chlorine are used as the basis for comparison for relative atomic masses. Chemists assign the relative atomic mass of the other elements by measuring how much of it reacted with one of these standards. The relative atomic mass when measured out in grams is called the gram atomic mass. 1 gram atom of oxygen is 8 grams of oxygen. 2 gram atoms of nitrogen is 28 grams. Measuring the reacting masses of all elements in this way is long and tedious. So, one small spectroscopy made it possible to measure the mass of an atom, the atomic mass unit was defined. One atomic mass unit is equivalent to one twelfth of the mass of one carbon-12 atom. Because the masses of atoms are so small, instead of using kilograms, it's neater and more appropriate to use AMUs. The updated term for atomic mass unit is unified mass or U.
Isotopes are forms of an element in which the atoms have different masses. For example, hydrogen has three isotopes, protium H1, deuterium H2 and tritium H3, an artificial isotope. All isotopes of an element do not occur in equal amounts in nature. 99.99% of hydrogen in nature is H1 or regular hydrogen. For isotopes, the average atomic mass is calculated. The proportion in which they are found is included for in the calculation. Here is how the average atomic mass of chlorine is calculated. The molecular mass of any molecule is the sum of the atomic masses of the atoms expressed in atomic mass units, that is, U. For example, the molecular mass of methane is 12 plus 4.8 which is 16.08 here are the molecular masses of different covalent molecules these values are important when talking about solutions and the strength of solutions for ionic compounds the sum of the atomic masses is called the formula mass calculates the molecular mass or formula mass of the compounds. Also, identify the compounds from the given molecular mass. When you are done, click Submit. Just as we use the terms pair and dozen for objects, we can see scientists came up with the term mole as a measure of the number of particles, atoms or molecules. One mole of a substance always contains 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 particles, which is called Avogadro's number. You can't actually count out such a large number of particles. Another way to do it is to measure out the molecular mass of the substance in grams. This amounts to one mole. For example, one mole of carbon-12 is 12 grams of carbon. One mole of water is 18 grams of water. A mole of any substance always contains the same number of particles, Avogadro's number. The mass of one mole of a substance is called its molar mass. It generally has the same numerical value as the gram molecular mass, but it is measured in atomic mass units. The concept of a mole can be linked to the mass, the volume in case of liquids and gases, and the number of atoms, molecules or particles. One mole of any substance contains 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms or molecules or particles. One mole of an ideal gas or liquid has a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. One mole of a substance can be measured out as the molecular weight of the substance in grams. Just use the chart to figure out 
how to calculate different values based on what is given. One mole of gold or water molecules or sodium ions contain 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms, molecules and ions respectively. How many atoms of hydrogen are there in one mole of sulfuric acid? One mole of sulfuric acid contains two moles of hydrogen atoms. So, one mole of acid contains two times Avogadro's number of hydrogen atoms. Mass of a sample and the number of moles are related like this. How many moles of sodium hydroxide are there in 95 grams of sodium hydroxide? The number of particles and the mass of the sample are related like this. A sample of iron contains 2.71 into 10 raised to 24 atoms. How many grams of iron is this? Select the correct option from each menu.